Hi, this is Nancy McClellan again, and I know that we worked on some salad spinner art not too long ago, but I had another idea, so I'm going to try this. I have stamped two images on a watercolor paper, and these are Stampendous flowers, and I will put some details at the end of everything here. I did them in... Um, a watercolor friendly ink which is from Versafine one's in a gray and one's in a black and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask the flower off and then I'm gonna put it in the spinner to do spin art with now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a product here this is called Miskit which is a like frisket it's a liquid masking for when you're doing watercolor um, I may try one which again is in the Molotol. Um, it's in a little tube like this. It's a art liquid, liquid mask. There are probably many items on the market like this, but I happen to have these two items. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these items on my image and then I will mask them. I will let them dry and then I will come back and we will do some spin art and see if it comes out like I'd like for it to. Show you a little bit about what I'm doing with this um, masking fluid. So you can see I've masked a lot of this flower. This on the miskit that's in the little jar, it doesn't have any type of a brush. So I just use an older type of brush and I go in here and because this is a large image, I believe this works really well. But we're just kind of putting this on here and covering up the area and then this is going to dry so I just kind of blot it on there so I've covered the flower and then we're gonna let this dry okay now on my Molotol this particular one I think I may be getting a little bit low on this one but you can hear there's a shaker ball in there and you're supposed to pump it like some of those basic pens that you have and you can see that I have ink coming out and and they make these in different tips, but I'm just kind of going around the edge of this. And I do like this pen a lot when it comes to doing maybe smaller images that you want to get into. And I don't want to get out the brush. You know, this is a really good ease of a pen. But I'm just kind of scribbling this on there. And this will then come off when um, after I'm done with everything so I just kind of wanted to show you what these two products do and I know there are other products out there that work the same way you you find them um, my local scrapbook store scrap mania has it here in Cedar Rapids and I know that you can get at most of your art supply stores if you don't have a local store you should be able to get it more in the paint department uh, where you you find your acrylics and different things like that but you're just looking for a masking fluid is what you're looking for um, the reason why we're not going to use a paper mask like, like some of you would be familiar with um, if we do this with an alcohol ink or we do this with a watercolor your your paper mask is going to get wet so I really don't think the paper mask is going to be the way that we want to go so I think I have this covered as well as I'm going to want it to cover at that point I'm going to let these dry and set up my spinner. I have this particular image here that I'd use the Molotov with to, uh, it dried quicker, it was much faster. The other one is still drying. But again, I've got my salad spinner set up. I'm going to push my image down so that it's kind of sticking to that um, area that I have in there, okay? And my gloves are sticking to it, but I think it'll be just fine. So it's in there. Okay, now I've chosen three distress inks. I have no idea again. I've got distress, I've got scattered straw, shabby shutters, and a little bit of spice marmalade. So we're going to add those in there. And I'm going to start with the scattered straw first because I think that's going to be probably my best bet at that point. I, I want that, I only want a little bit of the spice marmalade. So now I'm going to spray this down. And I think it's got a fair amount of water in there. I'm not happy with the way this is not sticking, so there we go. Okay, I'm going to put in a little bit of my scattered straw. Okay, and I'm actually going to go ahead and put the shabby shutters on now because I want to see what that's going to do. Okay, 
Okay, and once again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spritz it one more time to get that to start to move. And then I'm going to get my lid of my spinner. I'm going to put it on there and give it a couple of spins. Okay, we're going to see what's happening there. Okay, that's a little different. It went off the edges. So we're going to hit a little bit more. Um, we're now going to put in the spice marmalade. And that's going to go kind of off to these areas. And I think I'm going to put a little bit more shabby shutters in there too. And well, why not go for the gusto here? Let's go ahead and add a little bit more of the green. Okay, now I'm going to spritz it again. Okay. Put my lid on. Get a couple of good twirls like that. Okay. I like that. That's going to be something different. I may actually try to put a little bit of green and I'm going to try to see if I can aim it just because I'm going to put a little bit more kind of green right in that area. I want to see what it's going to do. Um, I like that's I'm not going to be able to totally see what's going to happen because what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to let this dry. I will not be using my my dryer on this because I really don't want to use the dryer when it comes to the uh, masking fluid. So I want to leave the, uh, um, let it air dry by itself. Okay. So here's what I have and I'm going to let this dry and we can uh, rub off the uh, masking fluid when everything is dry. So I will be back. And I have my dried image loaded in my Misty. And as you can see, I have, um, I've placed it in the center of my Misty. And I use a trimmed down piece of an old Cricut mat that's tacky that I can put it on there so that I can get as much coverage on the background with a stamp that I possibly can uh, without using a magnet on it. So um, that way I can, I can get it, it sticks on there and it doesn't come back up. I have loaded on the other side of here on a, a largest background stamp that I have, which is gonna be like a six by six. And it's from My Favorite Things and it's a mini chicken wire frame. So I'm gonna stamp over this with a little bit of pattern so I could get something in that um, background, just for fun, again, haven't done this before, don't know if it's going to work or not. And what I will do is I'm gonna use a Distress Oxide. I'm gonna use Fossilized Amber. I don't want it to be a really large, um, you know, really noticeable type of print. And I'm gonna look and see when I do my first stamping. I kinda wanna tone on tone. I am not stamping this stamp perfectly. Um, and that's kind of what I, you know, I don't want it to be stamped perfectly. So I'm going to rub it on there and I'm going to lift this and see what I've got. That's really cool. It almost makes it look like um, it's a gold chicken wire. So what I don't have at the top and the bottom, I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm going to need to trim this image down anyway. So I have got that part done. I can just take this up off of here. And then I'm going to have to let this dry because I want all of that, that fusion ink to dry on there before I start peeling off um, what's underneath the mask. And I will clean this off because when you start peeling this off, I don't want any of the residue left on top of there so that when I start peeling it, it smears into another. So my image has uh, dried and I'm going around the edges of it with very lightly with a little bit of a baby wipe because I'm trying to make sure that there's nothing on the top of this Molotol before I start removing it and there's a couple of ways you can remove it I have just a I call them rubber cement pickup uh, it's kind of from my old art school days I call it that but you can also use your fingers but this is a good way to get it started now that I've gotten it wet a little bit wet with a um, with that wet wipe it doesn't want to go but 
Now you can just start rolling it off with your finger. So you can roll this off and then underneath there will be your image. So a lot of times I just roll it off. I kind of clean off the residue of it as I go around. and unveil the original image that I had in there. Now this could be very striking. Um, I think what would really be interesting, and I may try that, I want to wait until I get some of my new Distress Oxides, but if you've ever used your Distress Oxides on dark paper, this could be, you know, maybe even darker if you did a gray, it could be kind of stunning on that or you could do a darker background around this. But this is the, the thought process that I had, was that I would have now an image that was basically captured inside this background. And this is, again, pretty much a basic masking type of process. Now, did I go through a lot of work? I did. I like the effect that it's got. I will be able, there's a little bit of an ink right there that I'll be able to get off but I like the fact that I now have this image here. Now, I could take and watercolor this image. I could just leave it. This is the one I stamped in the smoky gray VersaFine ink, so I could leave it like that. But this is an image. I could highlight a couple of areas, but I, I, I somewhat really like the way this looks. This was the thought I had in my head when I did this, and this is how it came out. So. Um, you could put some Wink of Stella on there, some shimmer, some glitter, and just really highlight this flower. Um, this particular Stampenda stamp comes, it's the poppy stamp that comes with some leaves. So I could put some leaves on here and then pop them up. But I have a couple of areas here that I'm going to go ahead and I can clean these up. I could use a little bit of water and just finish cleaning that up. And probably what I'll do is I'll put this on a card and you'll get to see it in the end. Again. Thanks for sticking with me.